Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 10 of a blundering through birthright. That's impressive. That's double digits now. Anyway, in this session, we have a very small party, so with that, let's just kind of get into it. I know I mentioned a few episodes ago where, unlike Dark Sun, where sometimes we'd have like seven people at the table, we've got kind of consistently four player characters and a DM. But today, for this session, we only had three of us. That is, yeah, that's three. So we had Brindis, Valkyrie, and Roz, and then obviously the DM. So, very small party, bigger chance of dying. We left off at the end of last session. I confirmed the name. We were in the town of Eriksgard, and we just got an invite to go to Vikingar, which is where the queen is, because she had heard about how we had saved her country, and I guess she wanted to thank us in person. So it's like a couple days or maybe like a week walk to get there. So we set out on our way, and very quickly we come across three ogres. And ogres are jerks. They're very large and they probably want to eat us. The fight went a little bit like this. Fireball, fireball, stabby, stabby, thumpy, thumpy, punchy, punchy. But in the end, we somehow came up on top. They, I mean, the wizard usually doesn't get hurt because Roz is pretty good at staying away from the action unless he absolutely has to get into it. So fortunately, Roz does have healing potions because I think the other two, especially Brindis, were like hurting a lot and we still had a, quite a few days to go, so healing is best. We did manage to get some treasure from the ogres though, which was great, and then we didn't really have any other issues the rest of the way to Vikinger. And so we got there and we come across like a walled city. They've got an empty moat because obviously if it's filled with water up here, so north, that's gonna ice over and then what's the point? <laughs> and we get to the gate and the guards are like, uh, who are you? What's your business? And so we're like, uh, yeah, we were invited by the queen. And they were like, do you want us to bring you to the queen or do you want to explore first? And we decided that it was better to get an intro from somebody because why not? So the guard took us to the city, kind of pointed things out as we went and then eventually brought us to the queen's chambers where I think she might have been having petitioners. Maybe not. We were joking that we should come to her as petitioners because Brindis hates petitioners so much, so it'd be fun to annoy somebody else with them. But we come in, she's there, and she's got a few advisors with her, and she's, you know, very grateful that we helped save her country. We don't say anything about Brindis being the queen just yet, and she asks if she can help us with anything. People are like, hey, can you get us discount on good weapons? All that kind of stuff. And then we kind of start to talk more. And this queen, Queen Freyla, who's only a few years older than Brindis, tells us that, you know, the White Witch has been a problem for her for quite some time. And we're like, oh my god, same with our country. And um, so at least we know that we have an ally when we get to the point of, you know, needing to go after the White Witch, which 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 is probably going to be sooner rather than later. There is also a seer there and because Roz is all about learning things and magic and all that stuff, Roz tries to make friends with the seer who's like this 13 year old girl who is like, oh, you old man, you're kind of creepy. But they chat a bit and they exchange spells because why not? And then we take leave of the queen and we head about the city. Obviously Roz wants to go to the apothecary and there he finds a fire breathing potion he hasn't mixed it with any of the other potions that he has yet because, I mean, fire breathing is pretty cool, but, I mean, you could also potentially mix it and then get, like, infinite fire breathing, which could be problematic. Like, what if you sneeze? Burn down a whole city. <laughs> but I digress. As we're walking about town, these three guys come out and they're, like, veterans and they're, like, looking for a fight and so, obviously, when they see an old man and two young women, that is who they want to fight. Like, really, guys? So... This obviously doesn't go how they were planning it to go. They figured that it would be an easy fight and they'd feel great. Well, Roz is not having this. Roz doesn't want to kill them, but Roz has used up quite a bit of spells and hasn't had a chance to replenish them yet, which means that Roz has the fun spells like Mind Spike and Toll the Dead and all that kind of stuff. So the poor guy that was trying to attack Roz is just like not getting anywhere. Anytime he manages to like get an attack off at Roz, Roz manages to use a shield. <laughs> so it seems like there's this really invincible old man that this person just can't, can't even deal with. So he eventually runs away. <laughs> and then the other two, 
they get beat up pretty handily. But at the end of it, we all go for drinks together because why not? This is what we do. It's fun. They just want to have a good fight and they definitely did have a good fight and we actually got a lot of experience from them. So we're like, if you want to fight again, we'll fight again. So we spend a little bit more time going through the city, talk to the queen a little bit more, talk to the seer. But around this time, Roz starts to cast this new right spell that he has picked up. So the neat thing about the right spell, unlike teleport or transport, teleport, I think it's teleport, you don't need to have seen or know where you're going, you can just go 125 miles in any given direction. So Roz basically looks at a map and goes, mm, well, let's aim for there, and gets back into Stjordvik, which is our country. We actually end up going to Fremensky and we talk to Brand a bit, and he tells us that maybe we need to be a little bit concerned because Sfardi, who is the head of the Freemans Council, is potentially about to hit the end of his term. So there were five year term limits imposed at some point, I think this was before I joined the campaign, and if it started from the time he was elected, he's got like less than a year before his term is up. If it started from when the law was enacted, he's obviously got quite a bit of time. So Bran just says, you know, be careful, he might try to push some really silly or stupid or very beneficial to him things through, heads up. So. Brand and Roz actually sit down for a bit and they kind of come to a bit of an understanding. They talk about constitutional monarchy or something like that. Because above all else, even though Brand is all about free men and free men's will and the right to vote and all that, he is a monarchist. And so, you know, he's the one that we'd probably want to deal with more than Sparty, who Sparty's like, no queens, no monarchy, don't ratify it. So. You know, it's nice to have a conversation with Bran, be like, you know, we've supported you every time because every time he comes in expecting us to not support him, we're like, yeah, that's a great idea. We're here for you. So it was good to have a conversation with him. Next, we head back to Hollingholmen, which is our main city, and Asa is there. And if you remember, Asa is Valkyrie's arch enemy. Well, while we are away, she decided to become a paladin for Holm. So I have a feeling that she might not be such a big problem for Valkyrie anymore, unless Valkyrie is doing something to screw with Holm or people who are trying to worship Holm. So that might be okay. That might now be a bullet dodged. But while we're walking around the street, all of a sudden Val gets hit like in the side of the neck with some dart and just collapses and passes out. This priest comes up and he's like, oh my god, oh my god, you need help, you need help. I've seen this before, it's a poison. If you don't get help, you'll be dead in 48 hours. And so Brindis and Roz are like, hmm, I don't know, we've been swindled before. If we got 48 hours, we could probably figure something out. And then an apothecary guy comes up and he's like, oh, I can make it, but I need, it was something stupid, it was like 500 gold pieces or 100 gold pieces. I don't remember, but we're like, well, how about we pay you this? Like, we were haggling. We're terrible people. <laughs> we're pretty sure they were trying to swindle us. So, you know, Brindis is like, I can pay you, but I don't have the money on me. And the guy's like, oh, let's just go over here. We can get the money and blah, 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 blah. And so finally, Brindis is like, well, I've got like 40 gold pieces. Let's say it was 50 that they want it. And Brindis is like just slowly counting it out. Like I've got it in silver pieces. <laughs> and so they got pretty mad. And then just, uh, they're like, you know what? We'll just do it by weight. So Brindis goes to hand to them and drops and it goes everywhere. So while that disaster is happening, Brindis goes off to get a police officer. And the police officer she finds is Fisky. And Fisky is good friends with Val. And so Fisky's like, oh my God, I'll pay the 10 gold pieces that you don't have. And so they take the money and they run away and they just don't come back. And at a point, Fisky is like, hmm, maybe, maybe that was, maybe they're not coming back with an antidote. So he goes off searching. He finds these costumes discarded in a barrel. <laughs> Shocking. And Valkyrie just wakes up about two hours later with a headache, but otherwise totally fine. So, I mean, even despite our best efforts, there was still a little bit of swindling there. I mean, we can afford the money, but why when you can just not? <laughs> It's probably gonna come back to haunt us one time. It's gonna be actual poison and somebody in our party's gonna die because we're jerks about it. And so we finally get back to Ravenroof's castle and when we get there, shockingly, there is a petitioner. <laughs> but it's only one petitioner, so it's not so bad. But it is Captain Boomer of the police force with a priest and between them, they have the chieftain and the wife that you might remember from the end of last session who were petitioners. 
who had paid someone to raise their daughter from the dead. And necromancy is outlawed, so that's kind of not a thing. So Brindis basically goes, you know what, you need to like atone for your sins. So they're put into service at the castle as like slaves. And then Brenda says that the daughter's body needs to be burned because that way they probably won't be able to resurrect her and they're only going to be employed or slaves or whatever at the castle until the fire boat, burning boat, has been paid for for their daughter. So once they pay off that debt, they are free to go and hopefully they'll have learned a lesson and not try to raise people from the dead again. And the last thing to happen in this session is a raven shows up from Vardigan. Vardigan has made it to Iver. He says that people in the city there aren't starving as much and it's probably because they're fishing, but the fish that they catch is not being disseminated throughout the rest of the country. And it's probably because like the nobles and the king are here, so they just want to feed themselves. And King Fulger is refusing to meet with him, which leads Vardigan to suspect that there is something sneaky going on there. And with that, that is the end of the session. If you did like this recap, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe so you will know when the next episode comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.